Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to um, <clears throat> bring something up to you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of the coffin. You try lifting the lid, the lid won't budge. Too much weight. You try banging on the lid to unsettle that w- w- dirt, and maybe somebody will start digging their way down towards you. It's not happening. You just think you're going to die. That's what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help. You know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn. In reality, there are probably people standing by your grave. You just don't know that. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind that what God gave you, pretty much on a loner basis, called life, by abusing drugs and alcohol, you might take that away from you by overdosing. And if that's not selfish enough, what about the people that love and care for you and need you most? Mother, father, husband, wife, brother, sister, children, and grandchildren. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be like the person that I'm reading about on these index cards that waited and waited until it was too late. Pick up the phone and call me at 844-405-HELP and let me help you take your life back for your life is gone. There are thousands of life coaches like me in the addiction recovery coach. One in particular is Larry Geist from the Geist Academy at 516-458-2741 or www.odysseyconsult.org. Larry Geist and I always tell folks like you, it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter where you've been. What matters most is that you're here seeking help today to make a better tomorrow. Call Larry at 516-458-2741. Let Larry help you from your addiction to your recovery, from your depression to happier times, from low self-esteem to building it up. Larry Geis, 516-458-2741. Folks, don't forget when you go to bed at night, don't just leave your slippers at the edge of your bed. Stick them underneath your bed. That way, in the morning when you wake up, you'll be forced to get on your knees to retrieve them because you have to go and reach for them. And while you're on your knees, you can spend a little time with God. God who gave you everything that you have, including life. I call this an email, K-N-E-E, mail. It's your personal email, your mail, your chat, your fax, between you and God. Thank God to let you wake up that morning to even get on your knees to make that special prayer with Him. Thank God for the waterfall and the streams that you get to look at. There are people that didn't get to wake up. Thank God for your home, your clothing, your food, your husband, your wife, and your children. Ask God for guidance and directions for the whole day and the week and life It's in general. Ask God for forgiveness and mercy. When you finish with your personal email with God, put on your slippers, stand straight up, roll your shoulders back, stick your chest out, and walk with God 24-7. Knee-mail, K-N-E-E, mail. Between you and God, each and every morning is your personal set time. How can you quit drinking without AA? I did, and I'll tell you at the end of this how I did it. But there are many ways to do it. What is behind your drink is, first of all, understanding why you drink before you can use the core process effectively. It's a vital that you understand and recognize your own problem. In in AA, alcoholism alcoholism is viewed as a disease which only a higher power can help with. Outside AA, however, there are other models of alcohol dependence. One useful way to look at a drinking problem is to view it in the terms of survival instinct. The brain is divided into two basic parts, which we'll call the human brain and an animal brain. The animal brain is concerned only with the survival, and when you are chemically dependent on alcohol, it falsely uh, sends you signals, saying, I need to have it, that's the only way for me to survive. Because of this, you could call it the booze brain. If you don't understand now that the, how, uh, how the booze brain works, it can easily trick the human brain into the drinking part. Implementing the core, commit yourself to a permanent abstinence from alcohol. You do not need alcohol to survive. I am telling you this from a personal experience. Make a plan to quit for good. 
When you're ready, say the words, I will never ever drink again. Pay attention to how you feel during that time. If you are scared, panicked, angry, or depressed, or feeling badly in some way, that is the other side, the booze brain, the animal brain, talking to you again. And, in all honesty, you will feel bad at first. Your body has been operating with this chemical for, well, however long. For me, about 50 years. It thinks it needs it desperately. It has to learn how to operate without it now. And learning has a curve. Give it time to learn. Your neur neurons, which have been uh, dulled by booze for quite some time, and now are all a buzz with activity, which means that their resting and sleeping will probably be hard for you for a couple days in the beginning. In the meantime, your booze brain will tell you lies. Call it a liar and watch late night TV and as it passes. Avoid listening to the booze brain. Objectif objectify your booze brain. The human brain is much smarter than the booze brain, which doesn't understand that you can live without alcohol. You can outsmart your booze brain by learning to think of um, as something other than yourself, as well um, as uh, when you hear it speaking to you, just totally ignoring it. Objectify it by saying, it wants a drink instead of, I want a drink. When you objectify the booze brain, you realize that there, um, it has no power over you. You are in control and an outsider. All it can do is try to trick you into drinking, but you can outsmart it each and every time. It will try anything to get you to drink because it falsely believes that you need to drink to survive. If you are feeling bad, it will tell you to drink to feel better. If you're feeling good, it will tell you to drink to party and celebrate. In fact, it will try to use any event, good or bad, as an excuse for you to drink. Whenever you have any thought, any feeling that suggests to drinking, that is the booze brain trying to trick you. Respond to your booze brain by saying, never whenever you hear it asks you to drink. This causes the booze brain to back down because it recognizes that it cannot control um, uh, and, and there is no way to force you to pour alcohol down your throat. It will try many different ploys to trick you into drinking, especially at first. But now that you have this information, you will know that it's up to you every time to deny the booze brain's request. Remember, any thought or feeling that suggests drinking at any time is the, bruise, the booze brain at work. When you recognize it, just tell it, I will never ever drink again and continue whatever you were doing. Don't argue with it. You won't um, win verbally. It is all up to right here what's in your heart. Just tell it that you won't drink again. If your friends offer you a drink, just say no thanks. I'm quitting. You can also say I'm slowing down or just even say no thanks if you don't want to get into it. However, if people are in your circle tend to drink, it's probably the best for you to be upfront with them so they can support you during your times. If they don't support your decision, find new friends. Your booze brain will get more and more discouraged as time goes on, bothering you less and less. Before long, you'll be an expert at dealing with your booze brain, making it easy to stay sober. Enjoy your recovery from alcohol dependence. When you decide to quit drinking, forever. One of the first difficulties you will face is simply dealing with the day-to-day -day reality without alcohol. If you sit at home and have nothing to do, your booze brain will pester you to drink and it will be very difficult um, uh, to make it stop because your human brain is on idle. There, this is why you will need to develop something to occupy your, your human brain. Find or rediscover hobbies that give you something to show for at that time. Get in shape, fix up an old car, or just start a new relationship where you can do a show like I do. Learn to cook, play an instrument, decorate, or just go outside and spend time in the nature. Write helpful articles on WikiHow. Set aside the money you used to spend on drinking and watch your piggy bank grow tremendously. Celebrate every sober anniversary, whether it's a week, a decade. Things are going to get better from this point on. Don't be afraid that you'll slip or relapse. That fear is the booze brain trying to influence you. Eventually, the core process becomes automatically, meaning that you won't have to make a big effort to stay sober. I don't even count anymore. I stopped that a couple years ago. You may feel bad, angry, sad, or depressed at times, but the norm, but that's very normal with any human, whether it's alcohol-related or not. If the booze brain tries to use these feelings as an excuse to drink, you'll know what it's up to and how to deal with it. You, you're better, smarter, funnier, 
Whittier, even taller when you stand up to your booze brain. Ask yourself, what is the worst thing that I can, can happen to me if I ever drink alcohol again? Just ask yourself that. Then ask yourself, what are all the bad things that can happen to me if you continue to drink? Remember, what is your first drink made? Uh, what What did your first drink make you feel like? Uh, trying to make uh, logical decisions or even keep a job. Can I? Can you a actually ever casually drink again? If alcohol has been a problem in the past for you, the answer will be no. I can never casually drink again. Casual drinking is usually how a person got started originally. Most people do not start drinking every day after they have had their first drink. It's usually something that started off slowly and gained momen momentum at the time. If you've gotten to the point where you are now sober and have been for a quite a period amount of time like I have, don't risk it. It really doesn't make any situation or activity more fun or enjoyable. You can smile, laugh, and have a good time just as easily or even better when you're sober. What should I do about physical <clears throat> dependency? Do things that help you out not to be in the situation that put you there in the first place. Do something that produces outcomes such as building, cleaning, baking, creating, sewing, teaching, uh, spending time with an animal, or even researching. The alternatives task will give you focus that will help you feel that you are occupied. Get out and exercise more and meet up with friends who either don't drink or uh, support you 100%. What can I say to my wife as support for my drinking or doing a good job or at stopping? Praise her strength to start. And, and, and this is what, you know, it's very important that you praise the person that has quit. I just used wife as an example. But praise your husband and your wife to start with and acknowledge that they are doing a great job and it must be tough, but they're doing a great job. In terms of reminding him or her, if they uh, uh, start even looking at the alcohol, they might relapse. Tell her about the health risks and remind her uh, that look how far they've come already. Give them something else to distract them, maybe hugs, massages, or even take them somewhere fun and happy. Somebody said, how can I stop drinking when I'm home alone? Remove all alcohol from your home. It might also be a good idea to remove items related to alcohol consumption, such as shot glasses, wine glasses, cocktail recipe books. Lastly, consider putting a note in your car uh, where you can see it. it says, I will never drink again as a reminder not to purchase any alcohol ever again. Somebody said, how can I quit drinking uh, to dull the pain of my unemployment disability? Since you're facing a serious challenge, you need to be more and more serious about getting alcohol out of your life. You cannot risk adding alcohol dependence. Uh, it could bring real disaster. Seek out sources of inspiration and motivation. Determine what is the best possibility, realistic outcome for you. Folks, the bottom line here is, this, and I wanted, this is what I told you in the beginning, I want to tell you. You can actually quit drinking without AA in some, some uh, magical ways. Uh, for me, I went to AA for a few classes, and I just felt you sit there for 45 minutes, and you kind of sit in the back of the room, and uh, all the people that have been there for a long time, for some reason I felt, were okay with the fact that relapsing does happen, and I'm not okay with that. I also knew I needed to have um, uh, some sort of um, rehab 24-7. In other words, I needed to be involved all the time to remind myself. I couldn't just wait for 6 o'clock at night to, to get involved. That's when I created clearviews.info, which is uh, Community Lessons in Power um, Addiction Recovery. I created that website and then grew into this show where each and every day I make sure that I speak about addiction and recovery, I live addiction and recovery, and I help you with your addiction and recovery. That is how I was able to quit drinking without AA. AA, and I'm not knocking it, but AA has a 5% success rate in the first year. That's not to say that their substance isn't successful. I think it's their layout that isn't. In other words, you show up, and you lose interest real quick, and hence 95% of the people walk out eventually. Find what works for you. There is no right and no wrong way to stay sober. There is no right or wrong way. Whatever works for you best is the best method for you. This is for me. I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope that you come back real soon. 
Please have the best day in your life, but more importantly, have a sober rest of your life. Take care.